I talked about Concord a while back. Some people called it a slower-paced Overwatch. People are not impressed with it, and they're not buying the game to the point where it might lose Sony $200 million. And just recently, the game got shut down only after a few weeks. That is insanity. Then you have beggars and defenders like this. I implore people to give the new Concord game a chance. Why? Because the developers have put their heart and soul into it for eight years, but it didn't get enough attention. Well, I gave it attention, and yet it's still failing. Why do you think that is? Please buy the game, you can make a difference. No, we can't. If we buy the game, Sony will take the money, not the developers. People's job are at stake. Oh, sorry, stake. There are thousands of people whose lives depend on this game succeeding. No, they depend on the companies not treating them like garbage, laying them off, and closing the whole studio even when the game is successful, or when the game just came out. Let me say this one more time. The fate of the game developers is not up to gamers. It is up to the corporations that employ them. We can give them money, the game can be successful, but the companies can lay off these talented people all they like while giving their CEOs another freaking car to ride. The developer of the recently released Visions of Mana, Oka Studio, has all but a handful of jobs cut off by NetEase. Yes, the studio was shut down when the game just came out. That is insanity. How can anyone tell me that you can support game developers by buying their games after this? If you're a small indie team, sure, but even then, something will screw you over. I do care about the developers and the creators who made all the amazing games possible, but the industry clearly doesn't. The industry takes all the money from us, but gives nothing to the workers and screw them over. Studios are being closed, developers aren't getting paid, workers are being abused, and we're the ones to blame because we didn't buy their products? Unbelievable. We don't need people like these in the industry. We don't need people that blame the consumers for the screw-ups of these big corporations. Oh, it's because the consumers don't buy our game. I hope you feel happy for screwing the lives of these poor developers. No, jackass, we didn't screw them. The publishers did. I swear, this whole industry feels like a typical Kitchen Nightmares episode. The Amy's Baking Company episode is the one I recommend everyone to watch. It's on YouTube Uncensored, no excuse to not watch. It's eye-opening when you see these people in real life. Zero responsibility. They can't take criticism and blame online bullies for all the hate, and they abuse and mistreat their workers. If the industry continues to behave like that, I don't mind it goes under. I don't support an industry that doesn't support their workers. I don't want to give corporations money so that their CEOs can buy a new supercar while they put their workers in unemployment. But that's the reality that we live in. And you wonder why I sail the seas. Big companies are screwing you over with bad media, ridiculous prices, terrible services. It just makes anyone want to go sail the freaking seas. Save your money and don't get screwed. If you like to do all that, this person thinks you're something else. Torrenting stuff low-key means you're a pay do. I'm sorry, what? Where did the pedo allegations come from? Notice how those guys are always caught with terabytes of stuff. Yeah, and gamers are always caught with terabytes of games installed in their drives. Collectors are always caught with collectibles. What does that have to do with anything? Being a hoarder of digital files doesn't make you a child predator. That's because downloading and hoarding content is just a red flag. Why is it a red flag? Is it a red flag because you're hoarding stuff and child predators do that too? They also drink water, that doesn't mean everyone who drinks water is a child predator. Yeah, I don't know what made this doofus come to that conclusion. Nothing wrong with hoarding digital content, especially when we don't really own most of it. But if we are going to talk about sailing the seas for digital content, don't be fooled by simple tricks that scammers love to put around that trick people. Black Myth Wukong is so good that people are desperate for a free copy. In the pirated game subreddit, someone posted an alleged free copy of Black Myth Wukong in SourceForge, which is not exactly a place to distribute commercially released games. That alone is suspicious, but if you check on a file size, it's 64.1 megabyte. I don't know about you people, but that's not exactly the correct size for a AAA game in current year, and it's not the same as the game system requirements. The OP tried running the file on a virtual machine, but they also ran it on their host machine, which resulted in the OP being hacked and their data being held ransom. That or the OP is faking it and had both accounts under their control the whole time. Still, a good opportunity to learn something. For the record, Wukong is not yet cracked. If you want to see the crack status, check out the Crackwatch subreddit and make sure to stay up to date with what's going on in the digital seven seas. But regardless of Wukong's crack status, someone wants you to not support this game. I mean, piracy does mean we're not giving them any money, but there's more to it than that according to this person. Players should not support Black Myth Wukong. Why? Well, the Steam user who earned clown emojis all around said that there are groups of people who are marginalized. 
Okay, what does that have to do with anything? The developers are not only proven sexist, but they refuse to include a single iota of diversity. Why would it be bad to have a single person of color in it? Just one! Then I'll ask the opposite question. Why would it be bad to not have a single person of color in it? Why do their races matter? Then you have these two crazy lines. They could be in it for five seconds. They don't have to be the main character. Yes, you heard that right. This clown is advocating for tokenism and they don't realize how racist that is. People feel less alone when they can see themselves in their entertainment. Yeah, I'm not surprised that narcissists feel less alone when they see themselves. I'd be more insulted by you projecting how narcissists feel to non-white people. Oh, and advocating tokenism. We need less people like this on the industry, but others think there are other people who need less. This person is apparently not needed in the industry. The guy asks if we remember when games are about playing some generic enlisted guy instead of a one of a thousand freak. When people play games and make characters, they want to see themselves, which I guess he doesn't understand. I don't understand either. I don't want to see me in a game or someone that looks like me in a game. I'm ugly as sin. I find that desire narcissistic, and I don't want to encourage that behavior. I don't mind characters with vitiligo or having the customization for it, but I do mind people encouraging narcissism, seeking attention, and begging to be noticed, which I don't see from people with vitiligo. They just exist. The games provide option for us. We have the choice to buy or not to buy, to choose or not to choose. What I do mind are trash games like the Sims 4 and Dustborn and Modern Warfare 2 Remake. Actually, that's not that bad, but the third one is horrible. Good for you for having the rep. Shame that they star in crap games. It really does not matter how good the representation of your characters is if they star in crap games. This next hoopla is about crap in technicality because even great games can suffer horrible technical issues. I don't know what these console peasants are thinking. First, they claim that an average PC costs $7,400. I thought it was a typo and it's $740, which is a more reasonable average price. But no, it's based on the price of the freaking Mac Pro, the cheese grater one. Then the same peasant claimed that a $500 PC would lead you to games looking at their absolute lowest qualities. God of War 2018? More like God of War 1918? The Witcher 3? Or is it The Glitcher 3? The Last of Us Part 1? More like The Last of Your PC Part's Life? And Starfield? More like Trashfield? For real though, you can make a decent $500 PC with used parts, but if you want all new, PC Tears recommend $750 for a budget build with an Intel Arc GPU. Interesting choice. For a $750 PC with an Intel Arc GPU, the graphics will not look like this. But even so, there's nothing wrong with looking like this as long as it's playable. To me at least, I grew up with games looking like these. 